Hello, this is Cycle 2, Week 14 Science. This is Experiment 165, Cold Foot, in Van Cleve's book. This is a good demonstration of heat and temperature and the, uh, the movement of heat. And um, I, I think your students uh, will definitely uh, enjoy doing this. This experiment is relatively easy to set up. Uh, you need some aluminum foil and you need a, a piece of carpet or a carpeted area. If possible, in, in the location, um, your community's location, tile surfaces, I think, will work best for the aluminum foil. Hardwood surfaces would work okay um, a, a, as well. In order to set this experiment up, um, I, I, I moved a small piece of aluminum foil and I set it onto a, a piece of our, uh, our, our tile, our hard floor. Um, and then right next to it conveniently is a, a carpeted area. And so in order to actually do this experiment, then uh, you have each student who um, has their shoes and socks removed. That's the name of the experiment, cold foot. You uh, step onto the carpeted area and ask the students uh, questions like, well, how does the carpet feel? And they'll probably say it feels fine or it feels normal. Or how does, how does the carpet's temperature feel? Um, and what you want to lead the students to, to the answer is, it's basically the temperature that's in the room. It doesn't really feel any different to their foot. If they lift their foot up, the temperature of the air versus the temperature on the carpet, it, it's about the same. But in sharp contrast now, I've had this piece of aluminum foil sitting here um, for about 10 minutes. I think Van Cleef's book recommends 10 minutes. 30 minutes would work even better, however, however far in advance. Uh, you, you would like to do it, uh, but it, I would say at least five to ten minutes. But now when I, when I touch this aluminum foil, now what temperature do I feel? This, my right foot, is noticeably colder than this foot that, that's sitting uh, on the carpet. And that is the essence, then, uh, of this experiment, is to let each kid have an opportunity to do that and to feel. Uh, depending on how many students you have, you may want to have a separate piece of aluminum uh, foil uh, for each student uh, because, uh, for reasons that we're going to talk about. Okay, so some grammar to, to talk about today. Uh, heat and temperature would be the two big uh, scientific um, terms of grammar that I would suggest um, you emphasize. And we all kind of have an intuitive understanding of those things, but, but let's talk about them in, in a very, very um, science-specific context. Uh, so. Uh, heat and temperature are, in fact, different things, scientifically. Um, temperature is the ability of a given body or a given system, a system of particles like the carpet or a system of particles like the aluminum foil, to transfer heat between two systems. Heat itself uh, is, is, um, is, is an energy, a form of energy, that can be um, e either created by friction or... Um, by, by application of other forces. It, it can even be created um, uh, by, by removing energy from one system into another. So as temperature, which is the movement of, of heat from one system to the other, as that temperature process happens, then the, the flow of heat moves between systems. And so that's what's actually going on in this experiment. The, um, and then um, the, the ability of any given substance then to have temperature or to experience temperature changes uh, to conduct heat uh, is, is intrinsic into the, to the substance itself. And so aluminum foil um, is, is a good conductor, most metals are, a good conductor uh, of heat. It's certainly a much better conductor of heat than the carpet. The, 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 the tile or, or the, the hardwood um, is also a pretty good conductor of heat. And that's sort of the essence of why this experiment works, because the heat is actually um, initially, and in, in, in this experiment, it resides in my body, that energy resides in my body, right? Generated by my metabolism, the flow of my blood. And then um, when I step onto the aluminum foil, then some of that heat energy immediately begins to move. It's moving from the bottom of my foot into the aluminum. It's actually going through the aluminum and down and into the floor. Uh, and so, and so if and that's why then that movement of, of, of heat, that temperature, that flow of heat, that temperature change is what then my nerve system recognizes and sends back to a signal to my brain of that's cold, right? Cold foot. That, that's the experiment. 
And, and so, so if we were to use, for example, wax paper, that might be something you could do for more, especially for the more advanced kids, but maybe, in fact, maybe even for the uh, ABC Darians, they might enjoy that sensation difference. They may feel it a little bit with wax paper, but the, but the thermal conducting properties of wax paper are nowhere near as good as that aluminum foil. And so any temperature change, any temperature, literally the change in the movement of the heat, if they feel it, it's because our bodies are so finely made and their nerve systems, nervous systems are so finely tuned. Um, but I don't think they'll feel it very much uh, at all. Another thing you could do that, that I wasn't able to do on the video is if you do have like a small piece of carpet sample, or if you could obtain a small piece of carpet sample, I'm envisioning something that's pretty small, maybe even like three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch, uh, because children have little feet, right? I mean, for adults, you could have even a, maybe an inch or an inch and a half square. But if you were to take a small a block of carpet like that and put it in the middle and then step onto it, you would, I think you would immediately um, sense that difference. Where, the, where your foot is in contact with that carpet, it should feel more or less warm, and the surrounding area, surrounding tissue, will feel colder. That would be a, an option uh, of something that, that you could do um, in order to, 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 to do that experiment. So to do this experiment and to expand uh, on, on this experiment. Um, some other things to talk about then are, so if you stand on the aluminum foil long enough, then in that local area under your foot, it'll actually warm up. And again, for maybe for the older kids who can be still <laughs> uh, and stand, it, might, it may take several minutes, probably at least 10, may, maybe longer. Um, but that area will begin to warm up. Why? Because our bodies, our metabolism is constantly churning and it's generating more heat. And in a very local area, you could swamp sort of the thermal conductivity of that aluminum and the associated system so that 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 warmth, the temperature, which is literally the flow of heat, diminishes, and so there's no change felt. Um, but that's why if you, if it's winter time and it's very, very cold where you live, if you go out and you stand on like in, in a concrete poured um, garage, or if it's an unfinished basement, a concrete poured basement, if you stand there long enough, um, there's enough capacity to, to, to absorb that heat in the surrounding system that you're never going to warm it up. You're just going to get cold. That energy will just continually be drained from you. That's why if you're in a large body of water that's very cold, it's very dangerous because the thermal conductivity of water is good enough to, to move that heat uh, very rapidly off of your system and into it, and you have nowhere near enough um, energy um, to, to raise the temperature of an entire lake, even a small pool, right? Uh, and that's why, um, if, if or, or even if you're in the air, right? So air's not as good of a thermal conductor is aluminum or water, these other kinds of things, but it does conduct a little bit. That's why when we go outside, we can feel that temperature. We feel that change, right? If the air is cold when we first step outside. And that's why you know, um, we often, you know, if you're really cold, you huddle together with people, right? So you're pooling your, your body's ability to generate heat in, in kind of a confined um, space. So um, another term that you could use, especially for the another grammar piece that you could introduce is insulators. So conductors and insulators, right, are opposite. Yeah, it's intrinsic to the material itself, but um, uh, in insulating materials have very low uh, ability to conduct heat, have very low ability to, to change temperature. Um, and air is actually a pretty good insulator. That's why um, <clears throat> that's why you, you uh, man, or that's why people manufacture um, down comforters, right? By filling that space with the down or with the feathers, then you're creating big areas of air inside, and then once you get under it and your body is generating this heat, that air is effectively trapped. So now you're heating up that air that's around you and then you feel warm. And that's why when you're married and your husband gets in and he raises the one side of the bed, that's why you're always upset. Because Weird. suddenly that air moves all the way out and now, <laughs> and now uh, cold air comes back in. And you feel it, you feel it immediately. But of course then when the two of you are under there together, now you've got two generating heat sources. So in the end, uh, it, it's better off. Um, okay. There's a lot of science here that you can talk about. Grammar terms would be definitely to talk about temperature, um, um, conductors of heat, insulators uh, of heat, heat itself. Um, and it's a very practical illustration, something that everybody can participate in, I think, uh, and can experience. This is Cycle 2, Week 14 Science, Experiment 165, Cold Foot.